go now to Dr. Dwayne Lowens, uh, professor of urban and African studies at Rhodes College. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. You know, right off the bat, I want to get your reaction to this verdict. Good evening, Katina. Thank you for having me this evening. You know, I, like many Americans, I had a wide range of emotions today. I think the first emotion I had upon hearing the verdict was one of relief, relief that this case wouldn't fit the template of so many others. And I know a lot of people felt like um, it was so obvious this was a slam dunk case, but those of us who know the history know that wasn't a given. We have video of Timothy Lohman, officer, uh, shooting and murdering 12-year-old Tamir Rice. In fact, if you look at the video, you see that the police car hadn't even stopped before Lohman reaches out and murders Tamir Rice. But as we speak, Timothy Lohman is free right now. We have crystal clear HD video of Daniel Pantaleo murdering Eric Garner in much the same way George Floyd was murdered in Staten Island a few years ago, right? But as we speak right now, Daniel Pantaleo is walking around free. So this was by no means a slam dunk. But I think the relief quickly turned once again, unfortunately, to mourning because around the same time this happened, as many of your viewers may be aware, we started hearing reports from Columbus, Ohio, that law enforcement officers killed and murdered a 14-year-old, 15-year-old, a 16-year-old black girl and early reports indicate that she had called the cops for help and they came and murdered her um, you know Faulkner said William Faulkner said after um, Emmett Till was murdered he said if we as Americans have reached the point in our desperate culture where we must murder children no matter the reason or the color we probably don't deserve to survive and we probably won't and so I think that's the point we're at in this this culture where um, we have to wonder if this culture is going to survive because of what we're doing you know, Dr. Lawrence, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people really aren't celebrating tonight. Instead, what they're saying is, is they're glad there was some sort of accountability. But this isn't over. The work continues with getting justice in other cases like the ones that you mentioned. Agreed? Absolutely. This is, you know, and I believe all, all emotions that African Americans are having right now are valid. Whether we are laughing or crying, grieving or mourning, remembering or lamenting, all of those are valid. But at the end of the day, we have to remember this is one conviction of one case of one individual. Um, and I hope this conviction brings legal, it will bring legal accountability to Derek Chauvin. I hope it brings vindication to the family of George Floyd. And I certainly hope it brings closure to many black Americans. But it's not justice. Justice is the eradication of the system that Derek Chauvin was serving and that's what we really have to focus on speaking of that how do we reimagine policing so this won't be a wasted moment so we have to be honest, right? So reimagining policing is really uh, doing a few things. One, it's reimagining society and what we really mean by public safety, but it's also being honest about the history of law enforcement. Um, it's very rare, as we know, for police officers to be uh, convicted of murders. So every year around 1,000 individuals are shot and killed by police officers. About 1% of police officers are even arrested. And in the past 16 years, approximately 16,000 killings by police officers, Derek Chauvin represents the eighth in 16 years, 16,000 killings, eighth person who's been convicted of murder. So we have to be honest about the fact that we don't like to admit that there's a problem with law enforcement, that law enforcement often kills black bodies with impunity. So we have to hold individuals accountable. We have to divert funds to focus on actual community organizations that actually stop crime, that can help communities, as opposed to law enforcement, which, to be honest with you, they come in the middle of a crime or they come to investigate crime, but it's not really a force that's really minimizing crime. And then ultimately, we have to rethink, are we willing to do make a radical change about public safety and do something that's really helping as opposed to hindering black communities and other marginalized communities in America. Very enlightening conversation. We'll have to have you back on. Thank you so much for joining us and for your perspective. Thank you, Katina.